Sermon 25, 4. We must spread the gospel when we can. Matthew 25th chapter, verses 14 through 30. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them, and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, There you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Lately, we have been holding revival meetings on the book of Revelation. The last one also was on the book of Revelation. I delivered various sermons regarding the word in Revelation 6th chapter and Matthew 24th chapter. I did this because I really believe that era we are now living in is just like the era shown in Revelation 6 chapter. This is the era of the black horse, whether we would agree or not. We are now experiencing the harsh blowing of yellow sand in spring, untimely flooding in summer, and devastating typhoons in fall, the abnormally warm temperatures in winter. We are now observing abnormal weather patterns and natural disasters increasing and becoming much more serious. There are many cyclonic abnormalities happening around the world, 
and many of these do not even get reported. We are in the process of publishing another book on the book of Revelation and including the Mongolian edition of our first series. I cannot describe how hard this is. It seemed as though the Mongolian edition was almost completed, but after having proofread and checked it again, we found many parts of the original text were lost in the translation. So the ministry team gathered together again, hurriedly examined it. They worked feverishly to the late wee hours of the night and barely got finished. And by the next morning, they finally completed it and it left for printing. Actually, it was at the printer's office day off. But fortunately, we had a prior arrangement with them. So they opened the offices and completed the work for us. We are due to go to Mongolia very soon, where we will be not only preaching the gospel, but also carrying as many books with us as possible. So these books had to be completed within just a few days. We continued with these end time revival meetings, looking at focusing on particularly Matthew 24th chapter through to chapter 25 verse 13. In Matthew 24th chapter, the Lord speaks about all things that would take place at the end time. And in Matthew 25th chapter, through the parable of the ten virgins, he speaks about two groupings of people. These being those who are waiting for the Lord without having received the remission of their sins and to those who have. Also through the parable of the talents, he speaks about his rewards and punishments over the faithful and the unfaithful when he returns back again after the era of the pale horse has passed. And from Matthew 26 chapter, our Lord speaks about him dying on the cross. The gospel of the water and the spirit is now being spread rapidly throughout the world. But there still are still many places and countries in which it needs to be made manifest. We intend to enter Mongolia very soon and spread the gospel personally. But there still are many countries, not just Mongolia, that needs to hear the gospel. If we look at today's scripture passage, the Lord says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. The Lord opened the first part of the parable of the talents by explaining that a man had delivering his own goods to his servants. The goods mentioned here refers to none other than souls. God came to this earth and eliminated all the sins of mankind, past, present, and future living in this world. God possesses everyone living on this earth. The truth is that they all are the creation of the Lord. People, regardless of who they are, can never be compared with some earthly material object, no matter how great it may be. When the Lord returned back to his heaven after being resurrected from the dead, he gave orders and entrusted these people to his faithful servants. 
To explain this better, the Lord left after having entrusted the work of saving souls to God's faithful servants by giving them the ability to do so. Our Lord, who had plans to travel to a far country, delivered his goods to his loyal servants and left. When he eventually returned, he calculated to see whether each one of them had completed the work he gave them, if it was done well or not. So in today's scripture passage, it tells us how he praised those who had done well and punished those who did not. We can no doubt have several thoughts and meanings about this parable of the talents. However, during this hour, we are going to carefully consider this parable, particularly in relation to Revelation 6 chapter. Our Lord has, as depicted so vividly in this chapter, decided on seven eras for this world. Firstly, God will save many people's souls through the gospel of the water and the spirit during the era of the white horse. He will firstly come to this earth and blot out all the sins of people through the gospel of the water and the spirit. He then will entrust souls to those who believe in this gospel and instruct them to live by doing the works for these souls. We have to think deeply about this by latching or linking today's scripture passage with the book of Revelation. God has entrusted us with all the souls in this whole world. And he has given us the power to save them and the ability to spread the gospel to them. God has given every person abilities to save souls and to do the work with all their heart. Today's scripture passage speaks of talents as money, but it is really speaking and referring to our abilities. We are endowed with the abilities that God has given us to be able to work for his precious gospel. In other words, God is speaking of the abilities we all have been given for the purpose of spreading the gospel to every soul throughout the world. With these talents, we can deliver the gospel to them, help them perceive it, and have them receive salvation and return back to God. Giving five talents to one man, two talents to another, and one talent to someone else means that the Lord gave each individual person different types of abilities. Giving someone five talents means that he gave that person many different abilities. He also gave one man two talents, but another man one, and then afterwards left and traveled to a far country, promising that he would return and make an assessment and pay each one accordingly. In this respect, our Lord has delivered his goods to his servants and has given each one of them abilities and left again. It is mentioned in the parable that he who had received five talents took those talents, left immediately, ran business, and made five more in the process. He who had received two talents also conducted business and made two more. But the one who had received one talent buried it in the ground, and returned it to the master when he returned. Here in this story, the three different servants received their respective talents. The first servant received five talents, the second two talents, and the third one talent. 
but they all should have done business and made profit, utilizing all of the talents that they had received. Those who made profit, whether it was a little or a lot, received praises from their master. The servant who had received two talents also received praises, just as the one who had received five talents. But the one who did not make any profit, for he just buried his one talent, received reproof and suffered his master's wrath. Let us now take a look at the part about making some profit. It is written that one who had received five talents immediately went and traded with them and made five more. Making profit is the important concept here. When conducting a business, making profit is the most important thing. Otherwise, why be in business? When the scripture passage speaks about trade, you should not be thinking about money. Rather, you should realize that the word trade mentioned here refers to the work of saving souls. All souls belong to God, and we should carefully consider the fact that God has entrusted us with the task of spreading the gospel to these souls. Anyone who has received the remission of sins and thereby has their name written down in heaven has the obligation of spreading the gospel to those who have not. There is no reason for you to say that you do not have the ability to spread the gospel. Anyone who has received the remission of sins is able to spread the gospel in one form or another. But the Lord left the earth. Did he not give all of us various talents in order that we may be able to spread this gospel? If you are unable to spread the gospel to many people, you can at least spread it to all those around you. And if you did not receive a great ability, You can serve the Lord in various ways, according to the ability you have received. You can personally spread the gospel to the souls whom God has entrusted to us. You can assist other people spread the gospel. You can support them and you can work hard in various ways. If you just would determine yourself to do so, you can do the work of God. The Lord said that to whom much is given, much is required. Someone who has received much ability cannot help but serve much. The person who had received five talents immediately went, did business, made five more talents, and gave them back to his master when he returned. A person who has received much ability should do a large amount of the works. One cannot help but do as much as he has received. Every saint has his or her own share of works. In the area you have been entrusted with, you are to serve the Lord within those circumstances, abilities, and everything else given to you by God. The Lord will return back to this earth riding on a white horse and save us, as well as the entire humankind, through the gospel of the water and the spirit. But we need to remember that when God moves and works, Satan does also. The Lord will definitely come again at the end of these times. During the last days, we will go through the era of the pale horse, and as a result, we will experience and suffer martyrdom, being resurrected and the rapture. Until that time arrives, we should be single-minded 
and carry out the work of saving souls by spreading this gospel. It is our God given duty to be taking charge of and carrying out these works until the Lord rewards us in the millennial kingdom. We should have the godly attitude of not being able to help ourselves, but work with the amount of talents of which he has entrusted us with. However, it is not the case that we should work more just because we want to work more out of our own greed and that we refuse to serve just because we do not desire to serve. Each one of us is duty-bound to work according to the circumstances God has granted us and the various giftings He has given us. Therefore, no one should make excuses saying, I am unable to work for this gospel. I cannot serve it. I do not have the ability. Anyone who has received the remission of sins can serve the Lord. Whether the Lord has entrusted that person with a little or a lot. Therefore, you must not make excuses. And whatever the circumstances, you have to do the work of saving souls. Like this, all our churches in Korea are currently carrying out the work of spreading the gospel throughout the entire world. When doing this, we find at times it becomes difficult and exhausting work, and there also are times when we get annoyed as some tasks do not get accomplished in good time. We are spreading the gospel throughout the world by translating our books into various languages. But there are times when the translators do an insincere job. This makes me really upset. In most of these cases, our dedicated staffs working in this department do not know the languages of those countries. But even so, they examine the translated drafts paragraph by paragraph, comparing it with the original text to find out if there are any omitted parts. Sometimes we discover that certain translation work has been done very poorly and full of errors. When we try to correct these errors through other willing translators, it then takes so many more hours and we wind up paying extra fees. It is nerve-wracking because we become pressed for time and many resources become involved. When this happens, the desire to quit right there and then rises up inside of me and I start thinking that it would be better for us to live just the way people of the world are now living, because I too am human. However, despite these earthly feelings, we cannot do this because of the Great Commission, and because there is no one else who is able to spread this gospel of the water and the Spirit except us. Is there not someone else once in a while who can relieve us of this duty and spread the gospel of the water and the spirit? We could think like that and of course do so. But unfortunately, that someone could not be found who might have been spreading this truth. Since this is clearly the entrusted work that we must take charge of now, we cannot give in and quit. We are doing the work of proclaiming the gospel to the entire world through the internet. As there is no one else in this world that believes in and spreads this gospel of the water and the spirit. 
If there had been people around like that, the truly born again like us, don't you think they would have sent us a message by now? They would as soon as they heard about us immediately made contact saying, we too are spreading the gospel this way. We see that you are also doing it. We are glad to have met you. Then we would have been overjoyed, so overjoyed that we would have immediately sent them an email and shared fellowship with them. I went some time ago to a revival meeting at the Soko Church, and I cannot describe how busy they were. Of course, all our churches in Korea are busy in this way working tirelessly for the gospel. I was with Reverend Rowe in his office at the Soko Church, and he too is very busy, answering telephone calls. It is partly due to him starting several things at once, and also things had not as yet been able to complete. We should also not neglect our sisters and should think hard about what would be good for them also. We are considering having them take on the workload of the emailing department, which is extremely active in our sending and receiving of messages throughout the entire world. I really think it is now time that we purchase several computers solely designated for this purpose. We should then assign qualified persons and have them send out mail drops informing people about our homepage. We are living in an age of information technology where there is a swift exchange of information and we must spread this gospel using all methods available to us. We have to do it whether it is difficult or not. God has delivered his goods to us with instructions and left. He has, by doing this, entrusted all the souls of the world to us and gave each one of us the ability to work for the gospel. This is why we have this obligation of spreading this gospel, because we are living in the very end times and in the book of Revelations being fulfilled, where the world is becoming more chaotic. People all around us are dying spiritually for having led a wrongful life of faith by believing in the false pre-tribulation rapture theory. Tragically, there are many people, even among those who are waiting for the Lord to return, who are coming discouraged, disinterested, and thus abandoning their faith in Jesus out of total despair. There is no question about this. These souls are all dying. When visiting our homepage, you will notice an increasing amount of questions regarding the book of Revelation are been asked. We readily reply to all these questions. However, it appears that foreigners are the ones with these many questions. Perhaps it is because they at least have some interest in Jesus and the end times. They seem to ask many pertinent questions, and we respond to them with the answers. But it seems that Koreans are unable to even ask questions properly. Besides that, they are pompous and brag about themselves at every given opportunity. They are so full of hot air that only the subject line has some substance. When I, at times, pursue religious sites on the internet that have great subject lines or an eye-catching advertising brand, I get a strong feeling that they are just occupying space without having the proper knowledge, unable to provide 
appropriately, approximately explanations. Although we are using a lot of resources spreading the gospel to the West, it seems only the underdeveloped countries like Mongolia are open and have an acceptance for the gospel. Mongolia has a low standard of living, which was similar to Korea in the early 1970s. The internet, like many similar countries in the world, is readily accessible to their respective government agencies and large corporations, but it has yet not been available to the local citizens. There are sadly a large number of countries where the internet is almost non-existent. And generally, people living in these countries are not that corrupt. So when preaching the gospel to them, they receive the remission of sins by having immediately accepted the gospel in their hearts. You cannot imagine just how well they believe as, as we preach just like hungry people devour food. We have to not only spread this gospel to people in these undeveloped countries, but also to lost souls throughout the world. Since all of them have been entrusted to us, how can we not spread the gospel to them? Although we should take care of ourselves, there are times of sheer exhaustion and even fainting as we steadily work and press onwards. This is the era of the black horse mentioned in the book of Revelation 6 chapter. And we all have to proclaim this gospel to as many people in this world with all our strength before this age ends. The era of the pale horse is just about on us, where it would be virtually impossible to spread this gospel anymore. It is difficult, but it will become much more difficult in the coming days. So we should again take stock of our situation and set things in order and keep on doing the gospel work and not looking back. Spreading the gospel is like running a marathon. The course in front of us seems so long and difficult, but we must focus setting our minds on the goal and not just fall down due to exhaustion, but we should rather run at a steady and confident pace. We should spread this gospel by pacing ourselves and renewing our strength. Only by continuing to run can we arrive at the finish line. You and I are these marathon runners sent by God to give widespread witness of the gospel of the water and the spirit all over the world. God has entrusted his goods to both you and I and left again only to return later. He has entrusted the souls of this world to us. He left after having entrusted the souls in our country as well as numerous souls in foreign countries to whom we must spread the gospel. Therefore, we together are the ones designated to carry out this important work. Even though we are exhausted, we have to carry out this work until the end. Taking care of just one's own self is really hard enough. Yet we must also take care of those souls as well. Of course, living by risking your very life for the sake of other souls is never an easy task. If by chance we had no knowledge of what kind of error was coming in the future, we would have been discouraged and died like all of them. In just a short period of time, the whole world will face colossal disasters through natural famine, 
and finally the era of the pale horse will arrive. In this dark era, the Antichrist will make his appearance and kill many people who believe in Jesus and who have been truly born again. After the martyrdom of these righteous people, there will come the time when the Lord will resurrect and rapture these saints. For this reason alone, we cannot but go on living, spreading this gospel, taking precious care of what time there is left right now. Therefore, we steadfastly continue with the spreading of this precious gospel. Lately, we have been experiencing much suffering and hardship due to a long period of drought. As we pray, I believe God will give us much needed rain according to our needs. The saints in our locality need to also recognize what kind of an era we are now living in. We are also suffering along with others these kinds of natural disasters, which are now taking place throughout the world. Very soon we will start to experience more serious natural disasters, which will start to materialize around the globe. People have the tendency to ignore the Word of God, regarding it as unimportant and neglecting it. But as soon as they start becoming directly affected with the sufferings of these events, they will again seek out the truth and come to believe it again. People have this age-old tendency to believe if they suffer terrible hardships, but do not believe in God if they are living without these troubles. This is why God is making the whole of mankind suffer these troubles and hardships. If we look at Matthew 24th chapter, starting from verse 7, the Lord talks about various serious events that will occur during the era of the black horse. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. These are the events that will occur during the era of the black horse. In other words, these events will take place during this time period. For he said, For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Jesus said that when these famines and earthquakes arise on the earth, it will be the beginning of sorrows. When these frightful disasters become a reality on this earth, then the era of the pale horse will soon arrive, and the calamities of the seven trumpets will be rapidly poured out on this earth, one after another. Fireballs, hailstones, and comets will rain down from heaven like unguided celestial missiles. Stars will fall into the sea and into the rivers, bringing about huge tidal waves, tsunamis, and indescribable destructive earthquakes. During this period or era, calamities as mentioned by the Lord will surely come about. So we have to believe in this gospel and do everything possible to proclaim it to the entire world. While it is still relatively peaceful before the era of the pale horse arrives. When people run marathons, they tend to hit their physical limits after having run about 30 kilometers. Like this example, we are also at a point 
when things are extremely hard. Nevertheless, even if we are so exhausted and experiencing hardship, we must remember to pace ourselves accordingly and continue to run this race with the finish line in view. We should all realize that this era, which we are now living in, is the actual era of the black horse and that we have arrived in the era of these disasters. In one year, due to no rain, the ground cracks up like an overbaked cake. Water levels and reservoirs become critically low, leading to an argument about whether or not farming can even be done at all. We are now witnessing a worldwide trend of the building of dams, some of which are of mega-sized proportions. And yet, in another year, huge unnatural cloud bursts will occur, accompanied with abnormal sustained downpours, making for the ripening of crops difficult. Flooding occurs in diverse places. People lose their lives and homes with heavy casualties. This kind of abnormal weather phenomena does not only occur in Korea. Look at all the disasters that have recently happened around the world. The scientists could never have predicted it. These events are not a temporary thing. All this has been foretold in the book of Revelations, especially in chapter 6, where it refers to the era of the black horse. The era of the black horse refers to an era or a time of spiritual and physical famine, and we are now living in such a time. When the era of famine arrives, people will suffer hunger. Food to sustain us will be scarce due to natural disasters, and along with this, people will suffer spiritual famine. Soon after this time or era, the era of the pale horse will arrive as if just it merged in with this era. When reality strikes, this era would have already become the era of the pale horse. Disasters will from then on fall from heaven. Since we know and believe that such an era will come about, we cannot be having our own private thoughts. We will have no time to spare for that. I tell you that I cannot help but preach sermons about the book of Revelation in this day and age. What is more, the saints must also really pull their thoughts together and concentrate on the spiritual work. Yes, it is tiresome and difficult. But we must know, believe in, and serve this gospel of the water and the spirit. And as for those who have already received the remission of sins by believing in this gospel of the water and the spirit, they should spread this gospel to their family members, friends, and to other people and take care of those souls who are all belonging to God. We must spread the gospel to other souls as well and live for this gospel the rest of our lives by managing the goods entrusted to us by God and carrying out our businesses with our abilities. After all, God has entrusted us to live this way. Therefore, we must be ever watchful and our spirit must be awake. We must discern this era well, keep the faith, and lead a life of faith, spreading the gospel to everyone throughout the world, all the while praying incessantly. It is all because God has entrusted us with this work. 
I am determined to finish my book on the book of Revelation, have it translated into every language in the world, and distribute it widely to everyone. This is because there can be no future when one cannot accurately foresee this terrible era. One cannot be guaranteed of a future if you cannot perceive the present accurately. As far as the truly born again, who are living in this era and knowing all this, should not let our faith come to standstill. By accurately discerning this era, we should all know the next era that is following. And by leading a correct life of faith in the present, we will go on to the Lord having lived by this faith. In order to successfully accomplish this, we must spread this gospel of the water and the spirit throughout the entire world and thus throw away our personal thoughts and desires. Brothers and sisters, we must discard those thoughts that desire to live high and noble like princes or princess. We should be honored to God, spreading the gospel to all those who belong to God, serve the gospel through the ability that God has given us, put ourselves in a position by faith to proclaim this gospel all over the world and live as God's servants. Although we are constantly fighting fatigue, we realize that there is so much work we still need to do. There are brothers and sisters who have recently entered our mission school. I believe that they have really set their heart on living entirely for the gospel. I believe that they are the people of faith who desire to live totally for the Lord, eating and suffering together through hardships with the aim of fulfilling the Great Commission. We are also living in a time when laborers are scarce and people who wish to live entirely for the Lord are only but few in number. However, you and I must diligently carry out the work which has been entrusted to each one of us by using the abilities that God has given us. And we must proclaim the gospel with all our heart and might to the best of our ability. We should just simply be living for the gospel. We are going to go to Mongolia this time. We intend to work in Mongolia for a week. It will take a day to get there, and a day and a half will have passed by the time we have unpacked our travel luggage. Since we have to take another day out of our schedule for getting back, there will only be five days to work. I do not know how much work we can do in five days. I hope and pray that God will lead some souls to us and allow us to preach the gospel to those souls, help them receive the remission of sins, and establish God's worker there so that they can live for the Lord. They then will be able to lead a proper life of faith, separated from their former faith. I really desire to establish God's church in Mongolia. By establishing God's church and its leaders there, it would be then our duty to look after them, with living expenses, materials, and books. And by doing this, we will be able to spread this gospel through this strategic church and use it as a springboard to spread the gospel throughout that region of Northern Europe and China. Mongolia is connected to China and Russia through a network of rail links. Mongolians have easy access to either of these two countries using this form of transport. 
this nation was once colonized and ruled by both Russia and China. It is independent now, but as the result of past history, Mongolians have free access into these countries without the need for a passport or visa. This is why we desire to establish God's church in Mongolia. As for countries like the Philippines, we will only be sharing electronic books and paper books. We will not enter countries that we do not need to. There are many nations in the world where public order has as yet not been established well, like some in the Middle East. In countries where politics are in turmoil with internal wars and ongoing conflicts, you could surely suffer a serious mishap by mistakenly going there. Looking at it from that perspective, Mongolia, with its political and economic problems being of a secondary nature, it is really not that bad compared to other countries so I am glad for this fact. Dear fellow believers, now is the time for us to unite, pulling ourselves together, believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, and spreading it throughout the whole world. Do you believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit? Do you believe that your sins and mine have all been remitted through our faith in the gospel of the water and the spirit? The gospel of the water and the spirit is simple, but it is the real definitive truth. There are a very large number of false teachers in the world who do not spread this truth. Therefore, we who have this knowledge and believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit must carry out this work. Those who sincerely wish to be born again now must know and believe in this gospel through the books we are spreading. We are spreading the gospel printed media. We have done this because it was necessary. Those who have come to meet the gospel through our books will realize the fact that the Lord has atoned for not only all their sins, but also for all the sins of those to whom they will be spreading the gospel. When people spread this gospel, they gain strength, and you too will come to experience the same as you do the same. We will be clothed in the power of the Holy Spirit as we go on living that way. We must spread this gospel with strong faith, and we must concentrate more of our efforts into the work of spreading this gospel. In the future, other than writing books, I will concentrate my efforts on traveling around Korea, holding revival meetings and spreading the gospel and taking our mission school students along with me for on-the-job training. No matter what field I work in, I feel most strengthened and at my best when I am spreading the gospel. Are you the same? How much strength do you gain when you spread the gospel? How joyful are you now when you profess Jesus has eliminated all your sins? Was there any occasion where you had gained more strength than doing this? Actually, working for the gospel is not an easy task. But the fact remains that our hearts feel more peaceful, more glad, and best when we spread and serve the gospel. Spreading the gospel and serving the Lord is the ultimate best. We will go to Mongolia and spread this gospel, but there has to be humble souls. They have this perception that a large number of people in Korea are rich businessmen. With this in mind, we are going there to engage in a spiritual warfare 
against the powers of the darkness that has ruled over these souls for a very long time. We with this truth must make the people in that area surrender to God. Brothers and sisters, do you think that every Christian community in this world has knowledge of the gospel of the water and the spirit? No, they do not. The gospel of the water and the spirit is a treasure hidden by God, and so it is a secret. During the era of the seven seals, as depicted in the book of Revelation, even to those who do not believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit, it will remain a secret. While I was making this book based on the book of Revelation, I felt once again that there really are not that many books worth referring to as references. When people write a book, they should at least make some assertion of their own and show the truth clearly. But the writers of these books just go on unfolding personal stories and useless words instead of referring to scripture passages and showing their deep meanings. Brothers and sisters, I do realize you are exhausted, but let us, despite this fatigue, serve this gospel for a little bit longer, living for it and spreading it. This world is truly wide and there is a huge amount of work still to be done. And so we will be carrying out much work for this year, including the next. When the time arrives, when we are unable to work overseas anymore, we will live well and eat well amongst ourselves. That is because at the same time, we will still be able to spread the gospel here in Korea. We will be able to spread the gospel in Korea until the era of the pale horse arrives. Brothers and sisters, I know it is very hard. But let us again gather our strength and spread the gospel until the time when we can no longer do so anymore. I am sure the Lord has appointed us to do this work. Instead of thinking worthless things, the sisters should serve the gospel well through the internet. The brothers should have faith and think about the gospel before anything else, in accordance with the command of the Lord, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. As the end draws closer and closer, we must think about this gospel first and foremost and live for it with the utmost priority. I am sure that the workers of God will arise in great numbers in our church. We actually are training all the saints here as God's workers. All the righteous in Korea number about 300 people, and we are working in our respective department toward the whole world with our God-given talent. The work that we do leads people throughout the world into thinking that we are an immensely large missionary organization. However, you and I are able to accomplish this great work only because of God. The ministers in charge of the literature ministry currently reported that although missionary groups in other countries had total disregard for us, when we at first sent them the first book of the gospel book series. Since then, they are now requesting more books. So we have started to send them volumes one, two, and three of the English editions. They have come to recognize the preciousness of our ministry 
and changed their attitudes to a position of humility. It is now reported that when we talk, they listen to us well and are really cooperating. Since our work is done by our faith in God, I believe he is the one opening up and paving the way for us. God also wants his kingdom to be expanded throughout the world through us because the gospel which we spread is the real truth. If everyone throughout the world had a knowledge of this gospel and believed in it, then perhaps our efforts in working like this may not have been necessary. Scientists reckon that because the yellow sand phenomena is so severe in Mongolia, people who visit that region should not forget to take protective eyeglasses. And they tell us because of this, the season lag about two months behind those of South Korea. So we see the weather there right now is warm during the day, but cold at night. Mongolia has a centralized heating system, which is also affected by this phenomena. And the authorities there have informed the nation that after the 15th of May 2006, they will be switching it off. So with this in mind, we will be taking blankets with us to prepare ourselves for those cold nights. Brothers and sisters, I ask that you keep us in your prayers. Our going there will be the same as you going there. Remember with us, you are going there to spread the gospel. It is never to have a good time. No matter which country that may be, the only reason we go there is to spread the gospel and to establish God's church. If we appoint one or two workers and establish God's church there, the workers will grow spiritually, keep their faith, and live for God. And as our mission continues to teach the workers there through our books on spiritual growth, they will rise up, foster more souls, and spread the gospel. And soon they will be able to do God's work as his good, loyal, and faithful workers. I hope that you pray for us much. This Tuesday, Reverend Kim and his wife will return back from the United States. Right now, I am trying to figure out a good place for our ministry workers to gather together with Reverend Kim. There are times, I think, that we should gather together and feast ourselves by barbecuing two plump pigs. Brothers and sisters, you are exhausted. I know that. Let's gather up our strength. Am I the only one who is repeatedly saying that I am weary as none of you are? I know that all of you are weary. There cannot be but be hardships in this era of famine that the Lord spoke of. Even so, I once again admonish you, you must live for the gospel. You must believe without fail that this current era is the era of famine and you must carry out to the best of your ability the work you have been entrusted with. And you must live out your faith, loving one another. In the future, the world will become more difficult to live in. And a better world will never arrive. This is an absolute fact. Brothers and sisters, we must keep the faith well and serve the gospel well too. When you first seek his kingdom, and his righteousness, your flesh will be well off, and also you will be receiving blessings. 
I believe that you know for a fact that if you do not first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you will not be able to receive any blessings. Also, I believe God provides for his workers with all that they need, feeding them and clothing them satisfactorily. Amen.